Open world games are amazing. What we can see in a virtual world in a video game nowadays blows my mind on a regular basis, but still, some of it is a little weird. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 open world game concepts that make no sense whatsoever. Just a quick note before we get going here, we actually did a similar topic video a while back called 10 Dumb Things That Only Have in an Open World Games. So bear in mind, we're gonna try to avoid repeating too much from that one. We love open world games and we play a lot of them, so it's not as if we haven't noticed a fair amount of things anyways, so let's get going with it. Starting off at number 10, then let's start with something blatantly ridiculous, grappling the ground as you fall to your death. So you ever play an open world game where they have a grappling hook in it, like Just Cause or Dying Light? These are an innovation of games in recent years that just makes games so fun. I absolutely love grappling hooks, but I want to go ahead and say that they have a few things that just don't make sense. Like one, if you've ever seen a real grappling hook launcher, they're very, very big. And it's kind of bizarre when you think about how much power you would need to pull a human being up. But this isn't like the that makes no sense element of it. Of course, we have to have some suspension of disbelief in order to make a game fun. Mechanics are obviously not going to be completely true to life in a game that's like, hey, here's a grappling hook zip around the world but there's one thing wow does it not make sense you can easily save yourself from deadly falls in some games by simply grappling the ground now this it does not make any sense. And for so many reasons. I mean, both in Dying Light and Just Cause, it makes no sense that like, so you've hit terminal velocity. You would die if you landed. So you grapple the ground and start going towards the ground faster. At that point, they're just like, you know what? Ugh, whatever, it doesn't matter if it makes sense. Like, what more do you really need to say here? Grappling with the ground makes it so you don't hurt yourself when falling to the ground. Like, you know your game is wild as hell when literal superhero games have more realistic physics in them. The only reason this works at all is because it's super fun. Having a consistent grapple that is always pulling you straight to your destination safely, it's obviously there purely for the player's benefit. Just makes it easier to get around. But I can't even count the times ground grappling has saved my life in dying light so at the end of the day i can't complain it just doesn't make sense i guess who cares though right it's fun and number nine, people in the street who have zero survival instinct. Since Grand Theft Auto 3 came out and pretty much defined the open world genre, one consistent thing that these games all have in some capacity is dumb NPCs. Certain games obviously are better than others, but in general, the people you encounter in the streets in open world games have the self-preservation instincts of a fruit fly. Actually, no, scratch that. Flies are actually kind of hard to kill. NPCs, mm, if you tried to smack them with a person-sized fly swatter, I don't know that they would get out of the way. Flies tend to. These guys, on the other hand, often just stand there, let you mow them down with a car, and even if they've got the basic idea to do a little dodge, generally they go about their day like nothing happened afterwards. Sometimes they panic and run away, but just as likely they'll freeze in place and do nothing. Maybe they'll duck down a little, but that's about it. It's almost like they want to die. In most games, these guys just don't even try. In GTA, it's pretty ridiculous, but dumb pedestrians really take it to the next level. In other games like Prototype, where there's hundreds of people just kind of milling around around outside in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. It's really your own fault if you get snatched and absorbed into a Mercer's biomass at that point. Like, you're kind of hopeless. The reason for why open world PCs are so dumb is a simple one. AI is something that's pretty system taxing, even now. And most games just don't really bother making the people wandering the streets that smart. Like, they're just kind of there for window dressing, so they don't do much more than walk back and forth and sometimes yell at you when you drive on the sidewalk. Some games definitely are better at it than others, like GTA's pedestrians are way smarter than cyberpunk's brain dead, I guess, uh, people. Hey, they're all robots on some level though, right? I don't know. I don't know. They're not very smart in cyberpunk is what I'm getting at. And, you know, that's more the norm. In general, people on the street and games just don't seem to mind a whole lot about getting killed. And number eight, when metal and wooden fences are easy to smash through, but like a little brush is an unbreakable barrier. And you know what we're talking about here. This sort of thing pops up in pretty much all of them. You're driving along, smashing through everything in sight when suddenly this like small, like if it were in real life, easily breakable barrier stops you dead in your tracks. Like in GTA, when you slam through a traffic light, no problem, but like a bush totals the car. Or in Forza Horizon, 
4, where these small stone walls are everywhere that your car plows through with, like, no effort. But then there are other small stone walls in town around people's houses that are just too much. They look almost the same, like, really similar. But one you can smash and the other you can't. It's especially annoying going back to older games where it was even more inconsistent. Like, in games where you can just smash through trees, but then, like, a metal fence stops you dead. For one, certain things are just way too easy to crash through. I mean, if you actually tried to ram into an electrical pole or traffic light, your car would get totaled. However, in these games, these things bend over like a plastic straw. And I'm talking the kind of plastic straw that's designed to bend, mind you. In, in most cars in open world games are just like rolling tanks. Unless you're GTA Trilogy cars, which can both smash through everything, no problem, but like a stiff wind will sometimes make them explode. Other reason, it's really inconsistent. If you smash through like a normally impassable thing, why can't you smash through this other normally impassable thing? That's what's so annoying about this stuff. It's not just that it doesn't make sense. It's not even consistent. And number seven, climbing towers tells you everything. Assassin's Creed has a lot to answer for as a series. Like, what is supposed to be happening when you climb a tower and the camera swirls around? Shows you all the pickups and the objectives in the area? Like, most of the time you can't physically see all this stuff, so what is what is going on? Is this magic powers or something? Um, and so many games have this, but it feels like Assassin's Creed games are the ones that really popularize the use of towers to uncover activities and collectibles in games. At this point it's just accepted like some of them provide some kind of an excuse like getting to a tower and downloading information from it or something but for the most part it, it doesn't really make sense like from a gameplay standpoint sure you want to have places you can go to uncover the map and find out where all the stuff is so making it so you have to climb something to get that information makes sense as a challenge you have to complete to get it but in terms of real world stuff it, it it's a stretch yeah if you're playing a game where you're exploring a new and unknown place have so you slowly uncover the map makes sense but like sometimes uncovering the map is it's odd like let's say you're uncovering the map to oh i don't know rome one of the major cultural centers of earth uh feels like a little bit of a stretch like like even during that time would someone not have made a map and i mean i guess he doesn't need one because he's got elf eyes or whatever he spot tiny treasure boxes from the top of a church steeple or whatever i know i'm narrowing on assassin's creed here a lot of games do it though like far cry spider-man breath of the wild like i said y y you got your downloading there though you got middle earth they all do it and it even makes sense in some of the games like in far cry where you're tapping into the radio uh, but usually there's not a whole lot of justification given and number six cops are just cool with crime like the way police work in an open world game with a wanted level system just never really makes sense it's a thing that's really obvious in gta games but it shows up in pretty much every open world game where there's like an authority or enemy that starts hunting you down if you piss them off but this is specifically what i mean in open world games you can get into a shootout with the cops potentially kill dozens of them and they'll kill you in return then they take you to a hospital and just let you go that's how it works in gta games uh, and it's, it's insane when you think about it imagine if that's how it worked in real life yeah you're a multiple murderer you didn't just kill like regular people either you killed the people who enforce laws but you know we shot you so it's all water under the bridge and at least in the older games they take your guns in gta 5 they don't even do that while you're in the hospital recovering they just bring them in in a bag or something for oh yeah you had all these guns and we figured it wasn't all right to confiscate them i mean yeah yeah you killed some of us and like the GTA series is obviously not the only one guilty of this. In Red Faction Guerrilla, you're like a freedom fighter battling it out with the oppressive government. And yeah, they can get pretty aggressive hunting you down if you do enough damage to their stuff. But if you just like drive to one of your bases, they just completely give up and leave you alone. You'd think the rebel base is the last place you'd want to go, like leading them right back to it. But no, they're just kind of like, ah, oh, this kind of looks like a base. Yeah, I don't want to go in there. So they just give up. Or like in a sense. Assassin's Creed where the guards will hunt you, but if you just wander around, tear down a few wanted posters, that's it. Everything's fine. The only open world game I can really think of where committing crimes is more trouble than it's worth is RDR2, where getting a bounty on you can actually be a real pain. Scarface is kind of bad too, because cops can instantly kill you, but outside of those, most police responses to crimes in open world games are, are, are very obviously geared towards you, once again being out on the streets committing crimes. Yeah, obviously it's to make 
make things more fun if GTA just stopped when you were arrested or killed. Obviously, that would be not great. It would certainly say, hey, don't screw around in GTA the way that's the most fun to, that we designed the game to. So I think the game harshly punishing you for that would get old pretty quick. But it's funny to think about the logic behind it. The cops literally gun you down, catch you, and then I guess are satisfied with that. <laughs> oh, we gotcha. You can go now. And number five, ramps everywhere. All right, this is just dumb, but seriously, every open world game with vehicles in it has some kind of ramp or suspiciously placed incline that's there purely for you, purely so that the player can do the sweet street jump above all else. You see it all over the place. If this car is going to be ramps or construction equipment and some loose boards left around so you can propel your car through the air. Yeah, it's fun, sure, but who left this stuff here? Like, what are these boards made out of? I am driving a Honda Civic up these boards. Not a heavy car, but a car. And in Forza, where you're kind of racing, it can provide like a shortcut or something, and that makes sense. But like in GTA, I you get these random jumps and sometimes if you do them you get cash but who's paying that money to you is there like some mysterious benefactor who's big into stunt jumps he's like got cameras by these rickety ass ramps that they've set up like who is somebody going to drive a honda civic over these three boards <laughs> Who knows? Honestly, in the world of open world games, the fact that there are these ridiculous stunt jumps all over the place isn't a big deal. I mean, we all know they're there, and we all know why. It's fun. Ramping a car off of a cliff at 100 miles per hour is fun. And then you get some kind of reward for it. Great. That's nice. I get it. That's really all there is to it. But it's just funny if you think about the real world logic. And number four, no traffic in a big metropolitan area. Maybe it's a dumb pet peeve of mine. I don't know. But the lack of traffic in open world games, it bugs me. I mean, the past two GTA games were set in New York and Los Angeles. And uh, I don't know if you've ever been to those cities. But particularly if you don't live in those cities and have been there, you know what the traffic's like. It's like nothing else. A traffic jam in the middle of Tennessee on the freeway is nothing. Thing like a traffic jam in Manhattan. People take taxis and Ubers so they can just end the ride in the middle of traffic if it's too much so they can run the rest of the way. Like these cities are famous for hellish traffic jams, but no matter what time of day, you can just go cruising down the highways of Los Santos without a care in the world. Like sure, the world of Grand Theft Auto is supposed to be an over the top parody of the real world, but when it comes to traffic in the real life LA, Los Santos kind of seems like heaven. There's a couple of reasons for why this is one obviously system resources having a ton of cars on the roads at all time is really resource expensive it also actually makes a game more frustrating uh have you played the matrix awakens tech demo for the new unreal engine it's using all of the new unreal technology to more realistically model city streets and the traffic is much more like real life not necessarily completely there but wow does it make getting anywhere in a car much more difficult Difficult. And there's a reason why the most realistic traffic we've ever seen in an open world game happens in the PlayStation Spider-Man game. Spider-Man doesn't have to drive. So they just fill up the streets with as many cars as they want. It doesn't matter. You're swinging above them. And I'm sure at a certain distance, like, they drop the details significantly on any of that. But it's not hard to get a little envious at times. Even the smallest cities struggle with traffic. But places like Night City and Cyberpunk, Hong Kong and Sleeping Dogs and Liberty City and GTA 4 are presented as being tough places to live, but they all have pretty light traffic. Not everyone's the best driver, but they're still better than most real world people as well. Like, I hate traffic. I hate being in cities where there's traffic jams. So it's kind of personal because it's kind of super easy to notice anytime you go into the more densely populated areas of the city. It's just something I can't help but notice when I play an open world game. And number three, people just trust you to do things. It's pretty much true in every video game ever, but it's especially bad in open world games where they often put you in some kind of position of power. So many times characters just trust you with their lives, basically sight unseen, and want you to do things that your character basically has no experience with. Like in Assassin's Creed games like Black Flag or Odyssey, where you'll help out like a ship captain or whatever out of some jam, and suddenly he's just giving you the entire boat to command. I need some help doing this thing. 
saying, here, command my entire boat. Oh man, can you program a computer for me? I can't do it myself. Sure. You'd think there'd be somebody with more experience to take charge, but it's a video game and your character's like super naturally good at whatever they do. So everything obviously ends up working out and it's fun. One open world series where this happens like all the time is the Yakuza games. And they usually play it pretty tongue in cheek, but the side games you get wrangled into are utterly ridiculous. People want this random like gang member to manage a cabaret club, run a construction firm, turn a failing business into one of the most profitable companies in all of Japan, etc, etc. Yeah, no big deal. Um, between my yak as a crime adventures, I'll just uh, become the next Jeff Bezos. Uh, those are some of the most over-the-top examples, but literally every open world game does this at some point. I mean, imagine day one freedom fighting and your boss, the boss of the freedom fighters, comes out and tells you to clear an entire enemy base by yourself. Now, he doesn't come out and say, hey, we got some potatoes that need peeling or some grunt work or whatever. You come in off the street and become Rambo. I mean, that's good in terms of how fun the game is. You're the video game protagonist and it would kind of be dull if you spent a week peeling potatoes. But if it weren't a video game, they usually ask you to do something that's certain death. It is video games, thankfully. You want to be doing the fun stuff, not the boring stuff. So of course, most games just get right into the action but when you think of it from like a what you're actually being asked to do perspective it's absurd and number two, everything about outposts. Along with towers, outposts are a recurring element in a lot of open world games. And depending on the game, there's just something about them that doesn't make sense. Why does every two-bit warlord or tin pot dictator control their territory with a series of evenly distributed bases that are ripe for a hero to just mow down? Even ignoring the artificiality of that, the fact you pretty much always almost single-handedly take over these places, kill everyone inside, and then station one or two Two rebels at the location and that makes the territory yours forever with the bad guys staying away and never mounting a attempt to get it back it's strange Far Cry is probably the most guilty of this, but basically any game with outposts does apply here. The enemy never tries to retake lost territory, even when the place you take over is in the heart of their domain, and they've got soldiers everywhere nearby. For being ruthless bad guys with way more resources than you, an individual guy, they're pretty easy going with you taking their stuff. On the other hand, something like Far Cry 2 is the opposite, where outposts just never clear out, like ever. Like you've driven through the area and you killed all these guys dozens of times and you'd think they'd give up eventually but no they just keep sending fresh new recruits ah uh, get the guys over to that roadside outpost he's probably gonna drive by there again and it does they just don't give up it's another one of those gameplay mechanics that just doesn't make any real world sense but it does make the game more fun having to go back and defend your territory is more annoying than anything so it kind of makes sense that your enemies even though they look like chumps don't show back up I would take that over the alternative, at least in the game. And finally, number one is the amusement park world. A complaint we hear about open world games all the time, and it's not incorrect. There are a few games out there that feel pretty immersive as a good open world game, but at the same time, if you look at them a little too close, then it's really easy for the illusion to get shattered. For as many open world games out there that actually feel like a real place, there's a lot more that feel closer to an amusement park. There's tons of reasons for why that is, like starting off with the constant collectibles, and of course, the abundance of little activities but for me a big contributing factor to making the game feel fake is the world design itself it's awesome to see games add some variety to their setting but it can feel like you're going from forest world to desert world to city world because of how abrupt some of the biome changes are an easy recent example is gta san andreas with the remaster you can climb on top of mount chiliad and see the entire map from the game now and from that height it really makes it look like a little model floating in a bathtub everything seems so small and condensed from high up even games that are more one-to-one -one recreations are fairly guilty of this like in the spider-man game they made a lot of the buildings in new york smaller and a lot of the roads wider to make it easier to swing around i'm sure new york residents notice that uh, it's definitely different there are other things that make games feel fake like in games like far cry where the population of enemies seems to be way bigger than the population of pedestrians it's like where do all these guys live most far cry games 
games are like wilderness. Far Cry 6's world has military bases and stuff to justify all the soldiers. But like in Far Cry 5, where do these cultists even come from? That little cult complex you have at the start looks like it can house like a few dozen people max, but you kill like thousands of dudes by the end of this game. Yeah, they say that they're coming in from the outside, but where are they? Especially when you're in the northern part of the map, there's just barely anything there. At the end of the day, obviously video games are for playing and fun, and they wouldn't be that much fun without enemies to fight. Like San Andreas would be a pain to get around if it was bigger. Being Spider-Man, although that's not going to happen in real life, would be a lot more annoying because there's all the narrow alleys and roads in the real New York City, so it's not really fair to complain. But there's times when these games can go a little overboard and make things a little too player friendly. And it has a negative effect on the immersion because you notice it. But what do you think? Leave us a comment. Let us know. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.